Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Thursday the 22nd of August and this quick preview of the week beginning the 26th of August. And it's been one of those weeks for equity markets where the direction of travel has been a little bit difficult to ascertain up one day down the next and today is one of those minor down days certainly on the FTSE 100. German DAX is slightly um, more muted but nonetheless stock markets this week appear to be treading water um, ahead of the main event uh, which has really been the Fed minutes and the um, central bank symposium at Jackson Hole in Wyoming and there weren't really too many surprises from last night's Fed minutes um, what we did find out was that the Fed uh, voting committee is very split on the future course of US monetary policy and we might get some further clues when Jerome Powell speaks at Jackson Hole on Friday obviously as I'm recording this video I don't have sight nor sound of, the, of those comments but what is or what does seem clear is that barring a deterioration in the data and we may have got some evidence that that might be happening with the latest services PMIs and manufacturing flash PMIs for August you can see it up here in this intraday insights US manufacturing went into minor contraction in August of 49.9 and services PMI dropped from 52.8 to 50.9 um, then in the absence of a deterioration in the data I think it's going to be very very difficult to price in the prospect of a 50 basis point rate cut in September certainly after the minutes the markets are starting to price out 50 basis points and go to 25 nonetheless uh, Jerome Powell is going to have to navigate a very tricky path against um, a background where the economic data might continue to deteriorate further and we might get some evidence of that at the next payrolls report at the beginning of September and a recalcitrant, a recalcitrant President Trump who continues to question the Fed's competence. So how President, um, how President Trump deals with um, Jerome Powell's comments at Jackson Hole could well determine whether or not um, he dials up the rhetoric or dials it back. So there is an awful lot riding on the Powell speech on Friday. Um, as we look ahead to the upcoming few days we've got a G7 meeting at the weekend and Biarritz in France and there'll be plenty of topics on the agenda at Biarritz so it'll be interesting to find out whether or not the G7 leaders issue a policy communique. Um, some of the topics up for discussion are likely to be China US trade. President Trump will also be meeting Boris Johnson so it'll be very interesting to see what the relationship dynamic is there. Pressure will be brought to bear on German Chancellor Angela Merkel to implement a fiscal stimulus because if we don't, if we can take anything away from the data that we've seen out this week from Germany, the manufacturing sector still remains permanently um, stuck in recession with a slight improvement on the previous number coming in at 43.6. Again, you can see that in this insights column on the right hand side. Um, so we've got the G7 meeting. Um, going to be leaders going to be wrestling with a whole host of problems: Italy, Brexit, the, pro the prospect of fiscal stimulus, um, set against the backdrop of an ECB that's likely to ease monetary policy in September, and a U.S. Federal Reserve under pressure to do the same thing. Um, in the coming week, we've got some important global GDP and CPI numbers from the 27th to the 30th. It's an important week for European and US GDP numbers. France, Germany and the US set to release their updated numbers against a backdrop of concerns about slowing economic growth. As I said, Germany's numbers will be of particular interest given that they're, given that they're likely to be confirmed as minus 0.1. Um, and um, f the, fr fr the, fr the French economy, if I can get my words out, um, is likely to show a slight improvement and the US economy is GDP number is expected to be confirmed at 2.1 and a number of US policymakers have said that as long as GDP growth comes in around about 2% they, they see no reason to ease rates further. Um, what could be a very interesting um, particular data point 
will be US consumer confidence. That is due out on the 27th of August. And I'm very interested in that in the context of what happened in July. In July, we saw US consumer confidence jump really sharply from the numbers in June to the best levels this year. Um, and certainly we've seen from the, the earnings numbers from Target, from Amazon, from Walmart, from Nordstrom, that the US consumer is out there spending money. So why am I interested about the, the consumer confidence numbers for August? Well, it was on the 2nd of August that President Trump announced tariffs on a whole host of Chinese goods from the 1st of September, changing the entire dynamic for stock markets at one in, in, in the space of one single tweet. Now, the effect that could have on consumer confidence could well be very significant. If we see a big drop in US consumer confidence in August, then that could really set the, set, set the ball rolling in terms of a significant slowdown in US consumer sentiment. Um, we've had the Fed rate rise. We had those weak services PMI numbers. Now, they could be a reflection of a slowdown in the US economy, which has affected the US consumer. So those are going to be very, very important. US jobs and pay growth. US jobs growth is continuing to show fairly decent levels. Job gains, wages are very, very, still very, very robust. But that consumer confidence number could be an important bellwether of a significant slowdown in Q3. What else are we looking at? Well, we've got the German IFO business climate um, for August, which um, was moved to the Monday, and that's likely to paint a very disappointing and downbeat picture for the German economy. So that's on Bank Holiday Monday. We also have flash CPI for the EU for August as well. Now, headline and core inflation in the EU area has continued to remain weak. The July reading came in at 1%. It was revised lower. Um, earlier this week in core prices were stuck stubbornly below that at 0.9%. Now with Chinese factory gate prices in contraction and weak demand, it is likely that we could see further weakness in global inflation trends. And with the European Union and particularly Germany, um, very much an export orientated economy, that could well continue to weigh on inflationary trends within the euro area. So what am I looking for as the key levels over the course of the next week or so? Well, I've talked about this a lot. For me, the big level on the S&P 500 is the 50 day moving average. We can see that from this chart here, but also this series of peaks through here, which is around about 2950, 2960. If we get back above 2950, 2960, then we can go for a continued move to the upside. But while we remain below, these key levels here, then I think the line of least resistance is for a further rollover for US stocks um, over concerns about the Fed's reaction function um, and obviously the wider global economy in general. If we also look at the Germany 30 or the DAX, as most people like to call it, we can see once again here this potential for a little bit of a reversal forming here. But once again, we need to look at these peaks through here. So if I point my cursor at this particular candle here, we can see that 11,850 is a very key resistance level for the German DAX. If we can bust through there, then you could potentially argue that's a very small reversal, reverse head and shoulders perhaps, left shoulder here, head there. Haven't really got a right shoulder here, so I'm not convinced we can break higher initially, but certainly 11,850 is going to be a key level if we are to break higher. Similar sort of thing for the FTSE 100. Let me just open that chart. Here we go again. Slightly, slightly different with the FTSE 100. It's underperformed on the rebound from the lows, which would appear to, to suggest that there is a little bit of a barrier in and around the 72.30, 72.40 area, and then just above that at around about 7,300. But nonetheless, there does appear to be some evidence of a consolidation at these lower levels with potentially with the potential for maybe a little bit of a test higher. But what we need to see is confirmation of that. We need to see a break higher in the S&P, the DAX, and the FTSE 100. Because if we don't get a break higher in all three, then the likelihood is that one it'll be it'll potentially be a head fake. We've seen a decent rebound in the pound over the course 
of the last um, few hours. A big break above 122.10, 122.30. If we can consolidate above 122, then there is certainly potential for us to go a little bit higher. But this is going to be very, very key going forward. It's this key level here, around about 122. If we change the time frame on this chart, this should give us a better idea of the sort of um, time period that I'm looking at with respect to um, with, with, with respect to a potential break higher. So we can see that there's a nice area of resistance just above a 122, which we've now broken through, and now we need to consolidate above and potentially target and move higher towards 120 to 123 and 124 towards the 50-day moving average. So going to be keeping an eye on the cable over the course of the past few sessions and also Euro Sterling. Euro Sterling is going to be very very key. Um, I talked recently about a bearish reversal in Euro Sterling. Those of you who follow me on Twitter would have seen me tweet this chart. A, a bearish weekly reversal has the potential to really push us an awful lot lower. Um, certainly the oscillators starting to roll over and look a little bit weak. We may find a little bit of support around about 89.80, 90 the figure, but the fact that we've broken down here, we need to take out the 50 day moving average and look to head towards this series of lows through here around about 89.50. The resistance level on the upside is around about 91.80, 91.90. There does appear to be some evidence that we may have hit a short term top on Euro Sterling and could be about to take a little bit, tr l a little trip lower, um, irrespective of the headlines on Brexit and what have you. Um, and we'll finally wind that up with the risk story. Why am I not bullish, totally bullish on equity markets? Two reasons. One, Chinese one, we've broken above 698. Seven, while we're above that, then it's going to be very, very difficult for equity markets to rally meaningfully, particularly if the yuan continues to weaken. By the same token, the same argument applies to gold. We've had a key breakout in gold prices above 1480. While we hold above 1480, then upside for your equity markets is likely to be limited. We need to break below 1480 to signal a further bout of equity market strength because gold is a safe haven play. If gold continues to move higher, it's going to be very difficult for equity markets to do the same. Um, so other areas to keep an eye out for the coming week are a number of earnings announcements. We've got four year earnings from Hayes and WH Smith. Um, Hayes should give us a good indication of the UK employment market, WH Smith's UK retail. And we've got further US retail numbers out in the form of Abercrombie and Fitch and Best Buy. Um, and those are due out on the 29th of August. And if that's all a bit too much for you, on the 28th of August, we've got Brown and Furman, uh, the producer of Jack Daniels. And if the markets haven't done that, I'm going to have a little bit of a toast um, on Jack Daniels in the hope that it's going to be a fairly decent week for trading. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.